The Wofford Terriers are back home this week. Welcome into Gibbs Stadium, where tonight Wofford at 1-2 and two will take on the 1-2 and two Gardner-Webb Bulldogs. Terriers coming off a three-point loss on the road last week against FBS Idaho, trying to beat Gardner-Webb for the first time in three head-to-head meetings and at the same time even their record before beginning conference play next week. On a rainy and damp and misty night, here are your highlights. But then there's that intangible, that heart. And then it comes down to how bad do you want it? How much are you willing to invest every play throughout the game? Some guys, some guys do not fear a challenge. Some of you guys, I think you're at a point to where there may be some doubt in your game. The darkness of doubt will kill you and eat you up if you allow it to. What I want you to do is understand that you are ready to take this moment that we have, this three hours, this game against Gardner-Webb, who's a good football team, and go out and play lights out. Let's play for 60 minutes. Let's play smart football. That means execute. That means take care of the football. That means no penalties. And if we do that, we will come back in the big house and we'll have a, a reason yeah. to celebrate. Everybody understand? Yes, yes sir. Bring it. Maxwell will go out of the gun with an H back to his left and a single running back alongside to his right. Play action, Maxwell rolling to his right. Now gets rid of it and the pass is nearly intercepted incomplete at the 25 yard line. One of the Terriers had a beat on it. If he picks it off, he is gone. David Marvin's gonna be called on for a 45 yard field goal. The holder is Brian Sanders. The snapper is freshman Ross Hammond. 45 yards from dead ahead. Good snap, spot down, right footed kick, end over end, has the distance. Good, Wofford has the lead. David Marvin drills one and Wofford has a three nothing lead. Snap coming with the punter standing at his three yard line. Nelson at the Wofford 48, kick away with the right foot. That's a low line drive and Nelson will retreat to his 39 near hash. Makes a man miss to the 40, 45, Paul Nelson 50. He's to the 45, he will cross the 40. He is finally brought down at the Gardner-Webb 38. Terriers again will have tremendous field position. David Marvin lining up for what would be a 50 yard field goal. His career long 51 at Georgia Tech last year. Try coming from the right hash mark out of the hold by Sanders. Hammond snap is there. Kick on the way. Does it have the distance? It does and it's good. 50 yards for David Marvin. And Wofford adds to their lead. Have a night David Marvin. Again, not the best kicking conditions in the world and he drilled that thing. So David Marvin with his second long field goal of the night will take a break here at Gibbs Stadium. 444 remaining in the first quarter. Wofford now leads Gardner-Webb 6 to nothing. Wofford with a 6-0 lead. Two long field goals by David Marvin. The difference here in the first quarter. 127 to play in the period. Second and eight now from their 21. Wingbone, wide outs either side. The fullback is long in motion right, Raymond Smith. Jacks running the option. There's the pitch, far corner to Smith. Out across the 25, out of bounds. Into the Bulldog bench, shy of the 28-yard line. Second quarter about to begin. Terriers in their end of the field. Gardner-Webb. Four on the line of scrimmage. Terriers second down and 13 now from their 28. Jacks rolling to his right, throws, and a leaping catch made by Nick Colvin for a first down here at the near sideline at the 46-yard line. Let's go to Van. How about that play? And let me tell you, you don't talk about normally a Wofford quarterback passing in his efficiency rating, but Evan came into the day's game with 157 uh, a, a percentage point efficiency rating. Fourth down and two. Fourth and two at the Bulldog 45-yard line. Wing bone set, one receiver to the right. Toss, near corner, Raymond Smith. First down and more. He's to the 40. Jukes a man at the 35. Out of bounds at the 30-yard line. First down run, Smith. One receiver to the right, a wing to the right. This time, Wofford lines up in the eye, and now two men will motion left. Muller will set up as the tight end, also a wing to the left. Out of the eye. Give to the deep man, Smith, patient, bounces off the pile, takes it to the 15, slanting left, wheels his way down to the 10. Well, they're well within David Marvin's range. Yeah, <laughs> he's already hit from 45 and 50 tonight. 
Second and goal from outside the six. Out of the gun, Jacks two to the right, one to the left. Hand off to one of his backs. Carry right side into the end zone. Touchdown, Chase Nelson. Or excuse me, Raymond Smith. Touchdown, Raymond Smith for the Terriers. He hit that hole quick, and there was a big one there. Terriers finally cash in. They, they couldn't do it with the short field mark, but they marched 96 yards on that drive. Raymond Smith with a six-yard touchdown gallop, a big hole over the right side of the line, and the Terriers are up 12 to nothing. Terriers, three down linemen, four on the line of scrimmage defensively. Maxwell wants to throw out of the pocket. It breaks down. He scampers away from a man. He's going to head for the left corner. Dragged down from behind at the 35-yard line. Drake Michelson caught him. Great pursuit by Drake from his inside linebacker position. Came in initially and showed that great speed to pull him down from behind on the edge. Tyler Vaughn applied the initial pressure to flush the quarterback Maxwell out of the pocket. Second and seven Terriers, clock moving, 7-10 to play in the half. Wofford looking to add to a 13 to nothing lead. On second down, quarterback digs it out. Deep drop for Goodson off play action. Throws down the middle and a sliding catch made by Zach Muller at the Bulldog 33-yard line first down. Great catch by Zach that time. Went down and got it sliding across the turf. Great to see the senior tight end making a big play. 25-yard reception for Zach Muller. Four receivers again for Maxwell. Two either side with a single back. Terriers rush four, and the pass is batted down by one of the Terrier linemen. Knocked out of the air by Chris Boudreau. It'll be second down and 10. That stops the clock with a minute and a half to play. If you can't get your uh, get to the quarterback, get your hands in the passing lane, and that's exactly what Boudreau did. Hit him in the face mask, so he didn't even use his hands. Use what you got, young man. Second and seven from the 32. Double play action for Jacks, throwing deep over the middle. Caught, touchdown, Zach Muller. Or did he drop it? Oh, he dropped it. He rolled over the top of the football. They're going to call it an incomplete pass, and Muller could not hang on. Holding his right hip, too. He might have landed on the football, Very which well is painful. Ass. Boy, Evan laid that thing out there for Muller. He had a step on the defensive back, juggling, oh, trying it. Well, the ball came out when he hit the ground. But we've got a replay up here, and the ball did come out when he hit the ground. It's Bautista. Now Horton will go in motion and also set up behind the quarterback. Hand off. Bautista stuffed in the backfield. Boston Bryant knifed his way in there and knocked him over. Closing minute of the third quarter. They have it first and 10 at the Terrier 40. Left hash, three receivers right, one left. And as he looks to throw the ball, Maxwell is hit. It pops up in the air, and it is intercepted. Terrier football. It is picked off by John Patterson, and Boston Bryant was the guy that hit Maxwell as he tried to release the football. Great. Pressure again by Boston Bryant. He's been doing it all night. John Patterson with a tremendous play to pick that ball out of midair. With the ball on the right hash mark. Now the tight end Estes in motion to the near side. Maxwell wants to throw a screen pass to his running back and he dumps it on the field. Is it a fumble or an incomplete forward pass? The official says that is a fumble and Wofford football. They cover it at the 35 yard line. Brandon Curtis comes up with a very strange looking fumble. I thought the quarterback made a motion to throw the football. It fluttered out of his hand, but uh, the official said that was a fumble as opposed to a forward pass. Van Hip, what did you see? Yeah, I think they got it right. And let me tell you, because he was going back but, as, but before he actually went forward, the ball came out of the air. 38-yard attempt coming up from dead ahead for David Marvin. Again, Sanders will hold. Hammond will snap. Snap right there. Kick on the way. Plenty of distance, and David Marvin nails it. His third field goal of the night. All right, now, first four. Clemson, Wofford, Terriers, Wofford, Terriers, Wofford, Terriers, Wofford, Terriers, Wofford, Terriers, Wofford, Terriers, Wofford, now it starts counting. We're playing Mercer down to third place. Mercer had an open date. That means they got two weeks to get ready for us, where we got one week. All right. Just like we came back from Idaho and we were a day short in preparation and we got it done. 
We're going to work our tails off to go down there and to get it done again. Drake, uh, last week at Idaho, a lot of things didn't go well for the defense. Tonight, you shut out Gardner Webb. What was the difference? You know, I just think. You know, after that uh, that loss against Idaho, it was, it's a tough one because, man, we came out, we played, and uh, I just think it was there was a fire in all of our uh, bellies to come back out uh, this this last week and have a great week of practice. And uh, I just think we came out with energy. That was the thing, just a, uh, energy and uh, will to win. You know, it was a short week of practice, too, because of the trip home from Idaho. You didn't work out on Sunday. Was that almost refreshing to have two days to, to recoup a little bit? Um, yeah, I mean, the, the whole trip uh, to Idaho was just tiring. It was a long trip. So, you know, it was nice to get off our feet for that, uh, that one day. But, uh, I mean, when we, uh, you know, our strength coach, uh, Josh Mather, he takes care of us. So when we do go, go in there and, and work, you know, it's, we're getting better. So. What does it mean to have this kind of effort with conference play starting next week? You know, I, we're just we got these first four down, and um, it's just time to step it up. And uh, these, these these next couple games are really what uh, what we're going for, what counts. And uh, this is this is what we want is uh, you know conference championship. So it starts now. All right, coach. Last week at Idaho, you talked about the fact that you you felt your defense had some misses. Tonight, right. you pitch a shutout, so that's got to feel better. What was done better? Well, I, I think we. Uh, played sound defense. There was a couple times that the guys got out of their gas, but for the most part, we just played sound defense. Did a nice job pressuring their quarterback, uh, stayed on top, didn't give them a cheap ball. Uh, thank goodness that, that we played such great defense because we struggled offensively. Uh, big kudos out to the kicking game. Uh, Coach Gasparato, uh, has got us doing well uh, in that area. Uh, David Marvin, uh, place kicking the field goals. I think he hit one at 50 or something like that. Uh, I think he made three of them all together. Barely missed one that was 53 uh, in pouring rain. Um, we, we still have miles and miles to go. Uh, we had a short week trying to prepare for a good team in Gardner-Webb. Uh, they've always been tough uh, from a defensive standpoint. They've got outstanding athletes, and um, they create problems for you. And uh, I don't think uh, we were as good as uh, we could have been, but uh, the great thing is we came out with a W. Seemed like John Patterson was all over the place for your defense tonight. John played well. Uh, our linebackers are expected to uh, to be playmakers, and and he was a playmaker tonight. Uh, we I thought our defensive front did a nice job on the quarterback. Uh, the big thing we've got to do is make sure that we keep contain uh, their quarterback. Great athlete, big kid, strong, and uh, and it was like uh, you know he, he's soaking wet and. Uh, Anybody that's ever tried to catch a wet football, it's difficult. Well, it's the same thing in tackling. And so uh, we were uh, fortunate enough to, to keep him under wraps for the most part, but uh, I thought they did a nice job uh, in what they were trying to do to us. And uh, we, we just made uh, some plays. We took the ball away from them two times. And uh, disappointing thing, I'm not sure whether we converted on uh, either one of them. So. Uh, we got to get to work. The conference starts now. Uh, we travel to Mercer. Mercer's had an extra week to prepare for us, so uh, we'll have our work cut out for us. Last question about the offense. A couple of big pass plays appeared to be completed, and right. then they were subsequently ruled incomplete. Uh, what looked like a touchdown ball to Zach Muller, uh, another long pass was uh, ruled incomplete. Right. Those balls are caught. Do you feel a little better about your offense? Well, I'm, I'm sure I would, but uh, – it, you know, it comes down to the, the officials say no. Uh, you you got to take what they say. Uh, we'll, we'll look at the film to see, uh, you know, what the right thing uh, is, whether they're right or whether we're right. So uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. All right, you mentioned Mercer next week. They've got an outstanding running back in Alex Lake. What, yeah. what is Coach uh, Lamb doing with that offense these days? Uh, he's doing a lot of things. Uh, they'll, they'll run – uh, multiple uh, formations. Uh, they, they've got a, a nice running game. They've got a nice throwing game. Uh, they do a nice job off of the play action. Uh, they're running uh, the gun stuff. They're running jet sweep. Uh, you name it, they, they've got a lot of plays. And, and that, 
that's difficult for uh, a defense to get ready for in a week. So uh, we we got to work. We we got to get to work tomorrow and uh, practice tomorrow night and uh, try to get better. Go dry off, coach. Thanks, man. A good night for the Wofford defense as they weather the elements 16 to nothing. Your final over Gardner Webb. Wofford shutting out a Division I opponent for the first time since 2010 when they beat the Citadel 35 to nothing. So the Terriers finished the non conference portion of their schedule at 2 and 2. And from here on out, it's nothing but SOCON games. And that happens, or at least it begins, next Saturday night in Macon, Georgia, when Wofford will take on the Mercer Bears. They are coached by former Furman head coach Bobby Lamb. That'll be a 6 o'clock kick in Macon. We'll have the broadcast on the Wofford IMG Sports Network starting at 530. I'm Mark Hauser. Thanks for watching Terrier Vision.